Okay, and we're back, and now we get to talk about the second game, which is from one of my favorite companies, Mistwalker. And if you haven't already listened to it, we did an entire episode devoted to Mistwalker, which highly, I definitely um, advise you to check it out because it was a great episode. And on, at the ending of the episode, we were talking about a pre the preview for the last story. Now we get to talk about the game in its entirety and our thoughts and feelings how it touched us in many ways hopefully not inappropriately but <laughs> anyway yeah. um yes yeah, so, uh, one thing i just want to talk about i've already touched upon this was the wait for the last story was a big one because the impact that lost odyssey had on me it made me into a Mistwalker fanboy of, of sorts and i remember basically patrolling the internet whenever something the last story was mentioned and i remember watching being there on Ustream for the two hour epic conference that the guys had on the game and i remember being spellbound and like oh this is the this is the number one game i want to play and i remember when they the free rainfall games was you know announced production the last story was the the number one that i was looking forward to the most and in some ways it 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 it, it meet my expectations but in some ways it didn't as well and i want to talk about that at great length now again this is one of the games that good sir over here got to play before any of us and i got to see that at the live stream and i was pretty i pretty much said to myself i only watched the first eight hours of the game before i call it quits which ironically is kind of a good quarter of the game so <laughs> but um yeah i'll pass it over to taylor what what was your thoughts and feelings leading up to the last story's release and that initial playthrough because that was one of your longest streams you know that i ever witnessed yeah that stream was kind of tiresome because i was doing double duty of not only like playing it but kind of trying to give you guys a play-by-play -play of what's going on yeah we, we <laughs> kind of demand it's like what did they say <laughs> what did they say yeah because if you're just watching you're just like okay i have no idea what's going on if you don't understand japanese <laughs> so i'm trying to like <laughs> like i'm trying to play the game catch what's being said look at what you guys are saying in the the the, the stream uh, or like the the chat box and then respond to it and yeah that was that was that was a lot of effort <laughs> so, uh, so. We, we demanded more we demanded more this is, this is a good looking <laughs> game but um yeah it was when when we got the game when i got the game it felt like a whole weight was lifted off my shoulders and i for the most part i enjoyed it but there is a, a, a few problems i want to address but um, uh, before we go into it, uh, Era, what was your first feelings? I think we've already discussed this on the Miss Walk episode, but just to remind everyone. Well, from the point of the, the Mistwalker episode, you know, leading up to the actual release of the game at the end of February this year, uh, I was hyped up. You know, I finished Xeno Blade Chronicles in December, early January. And I was hyped. I was kind of hoping, you know, Mistwalker with their great track record of Blue Dragon and Lost Odyssey. I was hoping, well, this could potentially, you know, be even better than Xenoblade Chronicles. So I was really hyped up for it. Uh, together with, of course, a new Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy XIII 2, uh, and the last story. And also Metal Gear Solid HD. I thought, you know, fantastic, fantastic franchises that I love so much are getting new sequels. And I was really, really hyped up for the last story so uh, I couldn't wait to get my hands on and once I finally did you know I just had to pop it in and start playing it um yeah I was, it was do you know there was there was out of there was this one point that I was really uh, unsure if it was coming out now want to plug this shameless tale of meeting a celebrity because I if you <laughs> haven't already know and I know everyone sort of knows I actually met Nobuo Uematsu and I got to shake his hand thank him for the wonderful music, and then popped in saying, I can't wait to play the la the last story. And he said to me, um, I don't think the game's coming out. And that kind of was like, oh, you know, we'll, we'll make sure we'll get it. You know, he kind of chuckled at that. But I I'm hoping that when he heard the news that the game was going to get released worldwide, that put a smile on his face. Um, we will talk about his music at, at, at the later stage because it's interesting, to say the least. <laughs> we'll say. But, um... 
Yes. Give me a brief story of the world of the last stories. You play as a mercenary named Zale. If you're playing a Japanese, his name is Elza. And we'll get into the localization problems later on. But you're with his band of merry mercenaries. And they go, they're on their way to do a job. And sh- shit gets serious. And one thing leads to another, and Zale acquires the power of the gathering. And I won't go too much into how or what it is. You'll have to experience that for yourself. But he has the power to do many, um, to gather monsters. And it-, it works in the story, but it also works in battle, where. I'll probably touch upon that right now is the battle system in the last story is very interesting because the way to describe it, and I described it in the Mistwalker episode, is it's a strategic action RPG. And you're thinking, how does that work? Well, basically, sometimes the game gives you the option of planning a strategy before the battle where you have to enter a certain point, you know, so you're not alerting the enemies. Yes, you know, I'll be using a lot of sort of terms that are kind of harken back to Metal Gear Solid and all that. <laughs> because there was times I kind of felt like I was playing a medieval Metal Gear Solid game. Because stealth also plays a big part in this game where you can actually put your back to the wall and you'll actually sort of what's that word? Strafe in the walls or something? <laughs> or cover them, whatever. And you can even peer at the wall. It kind of felt like a Metal Gear game in certain parts. But the game awards you if you get the jump on the enemies with, like, you know, double, triple damage and critical hits, and it's really good. You can plan so much, and that's one thing I really like from the last story. Um, in the game, attacking is automatic. You just simply have to go up to the enemy, and the character will attack. However, you do have to press certain buttons to use certain abilities, and I can tell you this now, I had trouble <laughs> to begin with, and... Usually, you know, we're talking about how at the beginning of Xenoblade there was a lot of problems with that, but I kind of expected it, and I was like, well, that's due to the controls. With the last story, it's kind of due to the gameplay with the, I know, the battlefield and changing of the enemies, because one of the skills is the slash ability where you basically have to go up to a wall and you peer, and when an enemy comes into a certain range, it will have a little slash across the top of its, you know, just above the enemy and if it's glowing orange and you press the button Zale will just come out and just slash and do buttloads of damage however it was so uh, intricate that the slightest you know movement of the enemy might be off it and if you press the button when it's not there you basically just walk out with (laughs) your hand in your pants waiting for the the enemies come and get the drop on you and i was just like wow you know you just got to be patient with this game you know because if you do stuff too quickly you may pay for it with your life so um one thing I just want to talk about quickly, the battle system, is the spell system, as I mentioned before in the previous episode, it takes a lot to cast, and later on you do get the ability to speed it up. But if someone, if an enemy comes over and hits them, it cancels it out, and this was really annoying. But it also added to the challenge, so you had to be on your toes, especially in those battles where just, you know, a, a horde of enemies would just... just wash the field and you would literally have to stand next to the magic user to make sure he or she wouldn't get hit so yeah i could definitely say the last story was a very challenging action rpg and the one thing i will say that it throws your bone with is if your characters learns new skills it actually gives you a tutorial each time you learn the skills on how to use them and for the most part, it works, but for the vertical blade, I was like, what? <laughs> or what, what is going on? <laughs> it wasn't until later in the game, I finally got the handle on. You have to press really, really hard at the wall, and your character walks up the wall and jumps down and strikes. And if you can perfect this, it makes the game just, I wouldn't say easier outright, but it just gives you another card to use in your, in your arsenal. So, um, yeah, just... Quickly, I'll go to everyone else. What do you think of the battle system? <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, the, the last story, it's, it starts off really interesting with, it, with its battle system. I have to be honest and say that I was really surprised, you know, by the implementation of, you know, stealth uh, and, and, and stuff like that, you know, in the different characters, you know, with the magic users having to spell cast, you got to defend them and, and stuff like that. And um, I have to be honest, I never really, really had issues with the you know with the controls 
uh, and I just use this slash amount, uh, slash attacks uh, a lot, you know, with uh, with Zale. But one thing that really, at some point, honestly started to frustrate me with this game was um, the fact that it it was way too easy, at, at least for me. The, the basically the game, how the game works is you go through an area, and there's a set number of encounters and you know battle pieces. Uh, and the way to kind of remedy this, you know, to have more battles is to have these spawn points where you can basically have another battle. You basically go up to this circle and you you, you fight another battle. And uh, perhaps this was my own mistake, but especially in, in the opening 10 hours or so, whenever I encounter a circle, uh, I basically use that two or three more times. So I yeah. guess I was kind of over leveled at some point. It does get to the point where there is a cap for that area because monsters don't give you anything after you spam that like crazy for a while. So in a sense, that was good. That means you didn't give you the sense that you had to be there forever. That you know, if you just gave it enough time, you could max out your characters for that certain chapter. Yeah, but I can totally understand where you're going. You know, everything's so coordinated in the last story. You have to do this here. You have to do this here. Um, one thing I just want to quickly interject with is I forgot to mention, and it's actually my favorite part in the game, however I know this is going to annoy some people, is most of the strategy in this game actually comes from your weapons. And I love the weapon system in this game. If there's one thing I can go out of the game is, is I, I, <laughs> I love changing weapons. And I was about to say on the fly, but that's actually bullshit. You actually don't change weapons on the fly. You have to go into the menu and change them, which can get annoying. But ultimately, if you do it, it makes the game easier. Because when an, an, a weapon says that it's good against the und undead, you better believe it's good against the undead. <laughs> it just makes the game... So I remember one that was good against uh, the undead or bone creatures or whatever, and I was just slaughtering them without batting an eyelid. I was like, oh my god, that's awesome. So just basically throughout the entire game, I, I basically spent most of my time like you know, getting weapons, upgrading weapons, optimizing them so I can go into any situation and just annihilate everything in my path. And it was so much fun. Uh, I, I don't know how you guys felt about this. I should, should you know, ask Taylor, what do you think about the whole battle system as a whole? No. Uh, I, I like the battle system. I didn't have any issues with, like, the, the, the vertical slash. I actually like that. I, I did, on time, have the very, very unfortunate mishap of, instead of slashing out at the monsters, I kind of just ran out from the wall I was behind, hiding behind, and <laughs> Yeah, that wasn't pretty because because I think it's like the first time they introduced that mechanic or something in the sewer. Yeah, they're like, hey, you know, you got this new ability. Why don't you try using it? And I used it straight into the enemy's sword with my face, kind of thing. So. <laughs> 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 it was, it was hey, not, look not, at me! Not, yeah, hey, look at this new skill. I totally did. Oh, fuck. yeah, I, I liked it. the The magic and stuff was nice. I. I, I, I don't want to put this. It wasn't, the last story wasn't something that the, like, the, the, those little parts where you had the strat bit, I liked them, but there, there wasn't enough of them. Well, I guess there wasn't enough yeah. of them for me. <laughs> and they were, they weren't that big of a deal to me. They were nice, a nice little change of pace, but, eh. uh, the, the sneaking thing too, you'd have it here and there, but uh, it didn't feel like it was, maybe used enough or something or maybe at least in different areas yeah. one from the other because most of the big expansive battlefields is where you use your strategy if you're undercover mm -hmm. and then for the more narrow narrow areas you'd be sneaking right. in, in a way you know don't want to spoil two areas but <laughs> we, we're in my head you probably know which areas i'm referring to uh -huh. so <laughs> but um but, yeah, yeah I, so <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah. That's just it was. It, I, I have to agree with Era. The, the 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 battles themselves were pretty easy. They're, they're the game itself isn't very difficult. I would say so. Uh, the but, the yeah. thing with that is, is you, you know, you at some point you get more characters in your party than you want to. Like Xenoblade, it has a set characters. You know, three characters in your party. But at some point in the game. You know, you get guest characters as well. You already have four or five characters, and then you have the guest characters. 
and then you're just battling it out with like six characters in your party at some point and each character has pretty much five lives uh, which is just way too ridiculous and I was looking at it in the menus to turn up the, the difficulty but uh, honestly this ruined the game uh, at least some somewhat ruined the game for me especially you know when I got past the 10 hour part I stopped using stealth and everything and I just I just wanted to finish it because you know this was the end of February and a lot of RPGs and games were coming out so at some point I was just like you know I'm just going into battle just rushed in there didn't think about strategy and then with all my party, you know, I just started slashing everything together. Uh, and, you know, maybe maybe lose, you know, two or three lives on each character. And I, I remember some boss battles where I was just like on the last life for, you know, one or two characters. Uh, and, 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 you know, fought very conservatively. But the difficulty in terms of battles was pretty much non-existent. And especially if you kept up with using the the encounter circle as well as you know upgrading your weapons and using the materials that you gained from from the uh, battles, uh, the battle was just you know it started off really interesting, but there was not a lot of variety and just too much similar type of battles. Perhaps I abused the system the wrong way, but uh, it kind of felt boring at some point. But uh, yeah. Uh, it's still a very interesting, you know, gameplay system on its own, but just it was missing the depth that, say, a Xenoblade Chronicles has, you know, later on in the game. Well, one thing I forgot to mention that I kind of enjoyed, it kind of took away at the same time, it was kind of annoying, but I kind of really enjoyed it, is um, the game gives you a crossbow, and you actually shoot enemies <laughs> from afar, and actually, so for some battles, it was actually quite fun. Later on, this one battle is just crazy, there's so many enemies that's on the field, as there are up in the battlements, and you're just like, do I target the enemies on the ground or on there and you will find out quickly that you're the only one that can target those enemies on the battlements because they will actually cause the most damage in some cases and um, I actually found it satisfying shooting those enemies and um, there's also another part of the game that's felt very satisfying and I think Taylor will testify <laughs> to this. We'll talk about that in a bit but I actually kind of like the crossbow system and um, when we talk about the town I want to talk about something I thought was really cool for upgrading your arrow abilities but okay from one thing we covered in the combat of course you've got your normal ground combat, you've got your stealth, you've got your strategizing wherever where you attack the enemy to get the jump on them, and you've got your archery. So, I, 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 I honestly really didn't have a problem. I can understand where error is going from, that it does get very repetitive, and that's really up to you if you want to you know, spend some time to you know, gain some levels or you just want to plow through the story. Because we're going to talk about the last story's story in a bit. <laughs> is um. The thing that really jumped about me, the story, and I think you can testify to this, is this is one of the RPGs that it, it felt like I was reading a book in, in terms of its pacing. Now, when people think of that, they think of something like Valkyrie Chronicles because that actually has a book <laughs> that you navigate through the story and the missions. Now, you don't have a book that navigates, but it, it feels like a book. Because then you got the narrator. There's 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 heavy narration in the last story, and the the length of some of the chapters take it feels like you're reading a book because within a minute you're in the next chapter without even realizing it. Um, not always the case. There's sometimes where there'll be chapters where you need to actually do them yourselves, where it's a side quest. Like there'll be one part of the game where you'll be like, oh, don't quote me on specific numbers, just just basically throwing it out there like you know be chapter 21 and if you go straight to the story you'll be chapter 24 and you're like hey what the hell happened to the other chapters you actually have to go and find them within the town and i want to talk about that right now is um the island of lazarus has this one town now i have to give bring this out there that if you're not a fan of one town hub games then I'm sorry to tell you, that's what the last story is, is one town. And I usually don't have a problem with that, because I, I don't mind Lazarus Island, it's pretty cool. Uh, one thing I really want to talk about in terms of the island is one thing I really like, is there's a system in the game that makes... It's, it's a different type of grinding that's never been done in an RPG. Is There is this ability where you can seek out things 
on the ground or wherever. And it's actually a time little game where, depending on how fast you look at this stuff, it actually gives you items. And you have to look at the five times in the row, and that fifth one is lightning quick. But if you can see it, it actually rewards you with some um, stat-increasing items. And when I talk about, I mean permanent stats, like plus one strength or plus one, you know, this or more health, and it's crazy. I, I, I could just foresee people that are completionists being there for days on end, just staring at random stuff, <laughs> you know? Because if you want to know, it's not random stuff. There'll actually be like a little thing on the screen you actually have to aim your target at, and you'll do that. Now, one part of the town that I really love is there's this windy street, and you actually have to aim looking at the wind blows. And if you actually hit it, it actually increases your archery skill, which I thought was actually quite clever of Sakaguchi to do that, because realistically, yeah, you're looking at a part of the wind and aiming with your eyes, and I'm like... That's pretty awesome. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'll actually give it to Taylor and Arrow, what they thought of it. Because I know Taylor has a very funny story, because I watched him do this on the stream many times with great laughter everywhere. <laughs> uh, what, yeah, what Greg is alluding to is that you can actually purchase an upgrade for your little crossbow and it uh, is a banana peel and you're probably going what in the hell is this why is this so funny it's funny and it's awesome because you can shoot this banana peel at people and they will fall and that's seriously oh. all it is and it, <laughs> they fall <laughs> on their ass <laughs> they fall. yeah they fall their, they fall in their tookish and it it is <laughs> It's hilarious. Uh, not only that, but they have barrels, which it actually plays in a part of the story, where there's yes. these barrels of like lemons. I think I think they're lemons, and you throw them onto the uh, onto the streets, and people will walk on them and slip on them, and you can walk on them and slip on them too. Most hilarious. I could play that game for hours and just do that. Like that there in itself. <laughs> and people thinking, what the, what the fuck? But you had to be on the stream and you had to <laughs> witness the good sir's devilry because he kind of made it... Uh, it was great, but he made it more funny than it was. <laughs> just, the, the, just, just putting it out there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not... Yeah, I, I don't know. I thought it was hysterical. And, well, I think... I have, I have no idea. I guess I am just really simple-minded, but... Uh, the, the, great thing, <laughs> the great thing about it is you could throw, you could, like, throw the lemons onto the ground and like one of the first little cutscenes is when you see Cork as I, I think that's his name and I know we'll get into that later uh, but um, you, you meet him you meet up with him and in the background the townspeople will be slipping all these lemons and you're trying to have this serious conversation and you can't do it you can't, like, I, I'm watching. it's so fun I, I can't like do it without laughing like it's just it's so funny to see that them like trying to get serious and talk and in the background people are busting their ass <laughs> all with lemons and you know what's even more funny you actually get rewarded later in the game for doing this so <laughs> <laughs> So, man, so, yeah, if you're like, oh, what a dumbass, well, being a dumbass pays off. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you'll find that you'll find that out for yourself. Um, yeah, the, okay, the town itself is really good, you know, because um, in one way, this is the thing about the last story that might turn a lot of people off. I didn't have a problem. Last, the Xenoblade is a very colorful game. In terms of its areas and just the color palette of presented each areas, the last story is kind of the opposite. It's very dark, lots of grays, lots of you know brownish and blackish. You know, it's very it, drab. It's very drab and dry, but it, it, it that's the world of the last story. It represents it really well. Um, one thing I also want to get into the because we didn't really talk too much about the characters of Xenoblade. But I, I actually personally want to talk about the characters of the last story. But before that, um, Arrow, I'm getting ahead of you. What'd you think of the town? Yeah, the thing is, you know, the town was uh, very impressive uh, for sure. It was very nice, you know, hub kind of system with a lot of 
uh, what I what I like most about it were those little alleys and little streets, and you can get, could just really get lost and you know find treasure, you know, uh, all around you know certain corners and stuff. And and I really enjoyed the town on its own. Uh, um, but you know, compared to the rest of the game, um, yeah, I th I think we'll get to uh, get to that you know later on uh, in the this discussion. But uh, uh, you know, the town was nice and all, but I, I just kind of wanted something else besides the town and the dungeons but uh yeah i was kind of missing that aspect in in the last story yeah we'll get we'll get to that in a bit because yeah it's 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 a touch and go subject with that but yeah. um one thing i highly agree with you is um exploring paid off big time there'd be chests everywhere there'd be those seek items you you could literally just grind your characters by exploring and i i cannot say i've played an, uh, another game like that you know, it, it, it was very fulfilling. And, you know, it's that one part of the game where you can get carried away. And if you do too much of it, it may put you off playing it. So use it sparingly, you know. But I just want to talk about the characters very quickly. You know, the main character, Zale or Elza. <laughs> we'll talk about this now. And that's hand in hand with the localization. And I got to say... What was Nintendo of Europe thinking? Unlike Xenoblade, where they kept um, to the original character names mostly, which was really good, in the last story, they completely changed them. And I must admit, it got really annoying when I opened the game and, like, what's going on? <laughs> because I can tell you this now, when I finished the last story and talked to Taylor about this, this it got very confusing. <laughs> it's like, who, who are you talking about? Who this? And I was like, the same. It was just, I, I have no idea why they changed their names. I mean, I'm like, you've already said this, good sir. Elsa sounds like a girl's name, and I can sort of understand that. And Quark is quite a weird name because his <laughs> name is Dag Dagrin in the English version, but um. Yeah, it's, but the one character that kind of keep the same was Seren, and I want to talk about Seren at great length, because <laughs> she is awesome. She is my favorite character of the game. But, um, yeah, it's, it's so bizarre, you know. I don't know why they did this. I'm guessing they, I don't know, went out on a limb and wanted to make it their own in a memorable way, and all that other stuff I mentioned before, but... It was so unnecessarily. I, I, I just wanted to say that. Well, <sighs> like the com here's here's like the comparison. So you have Zale is the main character. His name in Japanese is Elza, yeah. and then you have for uh, Can uh, Canon the main chick. Her name is Greg <laughs> Callista. Right. <laughs> and so then you have <laughs> Quar Quark, who is Dagron, and then you have Se uh, Seiden, who is Seren. Okay, and then you have Yudis, who is... I think that's you know, Yurik, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Yurik. And then you then you have uh, Jackal, who is... Do you know who Jackal is? Is, is, is that is that Lowell? I think yes, it is. It he, is. He's, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's the trickster. He's like the one that pushes Sarin's buttons. And right, then you've right, got right. Morani. I think it was Mia Mana or something in it's, Japanese. It's uh, 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 Mana Mia. Mana Mia. Ma when the Ma first time... The, Ma when Ma the first Mia, time... Ma 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 the first time I listened to that, I thought you were saying Mamma Mia, and I'm like, what? <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, wait, uh, what was um, General Trista? What was his name in English? Because it's different, too. Yeah, and then you've got um, Tasha. Who's uh, uh, Ter Ty Tiberia? I can't remember his name, but it's it something like, like that. Therius or something? Ted or something like that. I, oh, he was, okay. I don't know. He was actually one of my favorite characters. <laughs> and um, of course, you had Lord Argonin. Count Argonin. Yeah, Count yeah, Argonin. Which... I actually want to That's talk the about same. him. <laughs> yeah. And but um, who? Uh, what, and the main main one was um, Jiru. Who? What was his name? It was Jiral. like Jiral. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah. yeah they completely. The they just completely changed it and just threw everyone off. We're trying to talk about it across the pond. But, yeah, um, just talking about the characters, Zale, how can I describe him? He is a silent protagonist that speaks. That's the best way to describe him. In a way, he's very basic, you know. Um, he's a character, he's, well, he kind of works as well because, you know, you can put yourself into him slightly as the main character. It, you know, depending on RPG to RPG, it works 
good or bad, but he is all right. But his dialogue was really stale. Dagron is the leader, you know, leader of the ragtags. He's pretty much it, it. He comes in apparent at the beginning of the game. He has big aspirations for his group, and he wants to move up in the world. Then you have Seren. And I can spend the entire podcast talking about her. And I know that sounds perverted, but she's a really fun character. She, she, I liked her voice actress, the Cockney actress. She doesn't take herself seriously. She is one hell of a tomboy. Um, yes, if anyone's already seen it, it's like, is she the one who dresses skimply? Yes, she is. <laughs> but um, one of the reasons I love her is the one thing, her biggest goal in life, more than everything, is she loves to drink. I've never encountered a character in RPG that just <laughs> worships, is obsessed with Grog. And it's so funny going to the tavern in some ways and just hearing some of her conversations. Oh, it's just so legendary. And there's this one part where one part of the town is the Colosseum. And she introduced you to the Colosseum. And the in- innuendo she gives you, I was on my ass laughing. It was just so goddamn funny. And just like that, for there on out, I pretty much labeled her as like the major comic relief element that the last story needed and delivered. And I think it was one of the main reasons I kept playing the game is I wanted to hear one more liners from her. And it was just fantastic. Next, we have Yurik. And I really. Yurik was a good character. He's the most serious of the bunch, and he, ironically, he's actually the youngest of the bunch. And I can tell you this now, he's the youngest of the group, but if you look at him, he looks like he's had the most hardship because he only has one friggin' eye. He actually has an eye patch, and he's uh, the mage of the group. And I, I really liked his story. He has a side quest, a side story, that really sheds light on who he is, and I really liked that. And it kind of put him up on... In, in, in my rating of the characters. And, uh, yeah, he was awesome. The other character, of course, is uh, Marania, who's the priestess of the group. She's a weird character. She's one of those um, introverted, isolated characters. And she's very quiet, but she has her own comic relief in the fact that she's one of those skinny women who likes to eat a lot. <laughs> and the game kind of throws that at you, you know. I, that, that was also something that was kind of funny in its own little right, you know. Lastly, you got Lowell, and he's also hilarious because he's the youngest of the group. He's he's a joker of sorts, you know. He likes to push Seren's buttons, and he's kind of been made out to being a womanizer, but there's more to him than that, and... Okay, the, the biggest problem I, I see on forums and everything is they people keep saying that they look very basic. If you give them time, they grow on you. And the cast of The Last Story grew on me, as did the villains. And there's a lot of great villains in The Last Story. And one of the things about the game that I loved more than anything is, okay, there's lots of RPGs I've played in the past where it shows nobility's true colors, but... The last story does it so well. You, you fucking hate them. <laughs> you really, really do. You really don't like the nobility of Lazarus Island. You know, and you, you, to, to do this, you have to really listen in on conversations and you'd be hearing nobles scheming and all this and trying to plan what is right and you're just like, oh man, you know? It, it also adds to the atmosphere of the game and that was another reason why I propelled because I wanted this character to get what's coming and this character to this to happen you know it propelled me to play the game so uh yeah just wanted to brief that i don't want to go too much on the story because i don't want to spoil it yes there is the whole nobility aspect there's of course the life of the mercenaries and of course later on there's a race war with another sort of cat like race of people that goes into it and all this jumbles up into this you know the tale of the last story so I want to give it over before I babble on to Arrow and Taylor to talk about it some more. Oh yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, story-wise and character-wise, the game is is is, is really nice. Um, I have to be honest and say, you know, uh, the thing that I wanted to mention before and is that the game is pretty short. You know, it, yes. the game took me about twenty-five to twenty-eight hours to finish, and a lot of the character development is. Uh, it's pretty impressive in the amount of time that they have. They they pull off a, a lot of great character development, 
especially around the chapter you know 14 and 15 part where you you know have the mission of Yurik and, and stuff like that there there's a lot of character development there but um, afterwards you know around chapter 25 and stuff you know it's 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 kind of the war starting and you know it, it's it's missing that 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 epic journey sense that you know I had with previous Mistwalker games and uh, I yeah, I, I kind of got you know disappointed with that, and um, you know I, I just I just hung in there, and you know over a weekend I'd finished the game, and uh, yeah, somehow the characters were you know somehow the last story it was definitely not a a a bad game, but it was just so disappointing to see this world and this this wonderful world just end so briefly, and it's just I just wanted to see more character development, you know, I just wanted to see more. Uh, you know, banter between these great cast of characters, uh, and I was kind of missing that 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 sense of journey that you undergo with a lot of RPGs. You know, where you're sharing, you know, a common goal to to beat you know the bad guys and go to one location to the next, and that was kind of not really present. And you know, somehow the, the caves and dungeons at some point were kind of disappointing. But you know, uh, once again, it it started off great, but you know. It ended way too short, and that, that's that's kind of my gripe with with the last story, and uh, that that's the same can be said, you know, about the story and the characters. I, I, I just I just felt disappointed that it ended so soon. Okay, Taylor. I, it's kind of interesting that you say that, Ariel, because I um, what's the word? I, like, I honestly, the first two thirds of the game, I felt kind of like I was being pushed along I, I, instead of enjoying it for some reason it wasn't really capturing me i was doing it i was playing it but because i i i just i, I just bought the game and i'm like i i want to play this not more so oh i want to play it because i'm liking the game <laughs> uh but there it, but it, at that point where it gets going and gets to the to the war and stuff i actually got more and more invested into it and I, I I know that the like I I I had read up on how Hironobu Sakaguchi kind of wanted to go about this game. He wanted to be a little bit different because you know Lost Odyssey may have been liked by a lot of people, but also kind of got panned by a lot of people for various other reasons. And how games are nowadays that people they don't. It seems like most people don't want that epic long journey. They want something. Excuse me. That's a little bit more bite sized. And. Yeah. Which is unfortunate, because I, I, I'm kind of with you on that. I, I like that giant, expansive journey. I mean, freaking God, I'm playing, like, Legend of Heroes games that are taking me 60, 80 hours to do. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so I, I, I feel you on that, you know. I, I really, I, I, it is extremely unfortunate that this game wasn't longer. Right? Because I think it would have been great had it been tr treated with the same kind of approach that lost odyssey that lost odyssey got and it doesn't get that but i actually really liked how it was presented i like that it gives you this window but you don't necessarily have the whole view i guess is what i want to go for i mean you don't have that expansive journey all over the place and stuff and uh, for some reason it works i it, it works for me at least so I, it's, yeah, a, it's, a, I, <laughs> it, it's a sense of a tale told in an expansive world, and it's a mystery because I don't want to tell you about the rest of the world. <laughs> right, and that's where the, the the narration comes in, and it, it gives you the it gives you this vibe. As Greg had said before, it feels like you're reading a book. To, when I was thinking about it, to me, the mo it feels like it's presented as a game, but with the progression of a movie. In a way, or in or in a book of how they present the story, and so it, it's kind of a. It felt to me kind of like that kind of blend, and to do that, it just really. I don't know. I just, I really, really, really enjoyed it, and I just and the narration kind of added this mystique to it that you know you somebody's telling you the story, so they don't have all of the details, they don't have everything about it, so this is what you're going to get. So. 
<laughs> yeah yeah i'm pretty much i have to i have agree it's 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 a good world but i, I i'm also with you and i'm with arrow with it just would have been better if they just inserted a little bit more just not too much but a little bit more just to flush it out now one thing um arrow brief uh, mentioned briefly is the banter between the characters this is one of my favorite parts in the game that's also one of my ultimate gripes, and I'm going to talk about my gripes with the last story. Now, in real time, as you're in the dungeons and you're moving around the dungeons, out of nowhere, the characters will start talking. And it's awesome. You want to listen to this. This is where the problem lies. You will end up in an area where you'll get into a battle or you'll get into a cutscene. You know what happens to that good little conversation? It's gone. Yes. You, it will st- it will stop midway and you've lost it. So this is my advice. If they start bantering, stop. Just stop what you're doing, put down the control and listen. Because you know, there'd be like a really good story piece between characters or if Seren's talking, <laughs> hilarity will ensue. So just definitely just basically put down your controls, but still didn't like that Miss Walker, you know, did that. I wish they had like a warning button saying, Hey, go upon this point and you know, this you know, you'll lose this, you know, but it doesn't do it, so um one of the things I have to bring up, and this is actually not the game's fault, but more with the European version is one thing that will turn off a lot of people is, is if you're just playing a Wii on a standard definition TV with just normal AV cables, well, I'm sorry to say that this game only runs at 60 frames per second. And I remember putting this on my normal TV and the game will actually not play. It will stop and tell you to play it on a HD TV, which just floored me. It was like, you mean to say that you, you have to play it on a HD TV? It's just... It was just so surprising, you know. It's kind of sad in in a way as well that you're forced to buy a HD. I mean, nowadays it it pays to have a HD TV, but at the same time, it's sad if you don't have the money for one. That you have a game here that will only run on one. It was kind of sad in a way, you know. But that was another little gripe. But leading into the quality of the game, now for the most part, fifty percent of the game looks good, but there are so many times when the game lags and it lags when you're trying to turn the character and it, it gets jarring and uh, you know jaggy and all this and it, it doesn't look good at all you know the character models and the and the terrain and everything looks great but i think it's the fact that they program so much on the screen now with the town there's so many townsfolk and i've noticed at times there'll be townsfolk that actually slow down their animation will just lag and draw it's because i don't know probably because they program so much that we can't handle it now i don't know if this is a problem in the japanese version or not i think <laughs> Kitail will have to comment on this <laughs> No, oh, yeah, it, it doesn't. It's not. I didn't. It notice it as much, and it did pop up. There were times where it would slow down and stuff, but no, I didn't really notice the the towns of people uh, going into bullet time, if you will, and <laughs> that, that sort of thing. So. <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm not crazy, and my arrow backed me up. <laughs> uh, yeah, there are definitely some times where there's just insane slowdown, which is very disappointing. I probably think that's due to the f- amount of characters on screen but uh, yeah I, I noticed it at some times and it, it, that's, that's kind of disappointing to see uh, but we'll get to another aspect later on uh, which I felt they you know uh, contributed too much time to, but we'll talk about it later on uh, yes, but ultimately, I don't know what XSeed's going to do for the American version. If they look into it, great, but usually XSeed likes to cut costs, you know. I can I can totally understand that, so if you can look past it, then it shouldn't be a problem, but I'm just pulling it out there that it's noticeable, and it, it, I don't know. Usually stuff like that in games, I don't give a second thought about if it only happens once or twice, but it, it happens so many times with the last story, but I kind of push it to the side and just continue on with the game. But, uh, yeah, I'm actually kind of running out of things to talk about it, honestly. Actually, no, there is one thing I want to briefly talk about because it'd be a travesty not to. And 
Nobuo Uematsu, I mean, come on. I remember when I bought the game, um, my sister came over, and she's a huge fan of Nobuo Uematsu, even though she doesn't play Final Fantasy. And um, she she took it, it's like, oh, what's this game? And it's like, oh, it's the last story, oh. And I remember she looked at it, and then she came into the room saying, I know why you bought it, and she pointed to the fact it had music by Nobuo Uematsu on there, which I thought was quite hilarious. It's like, I didn't buy it just for him. Mostly, because <laughs> I'm I'm a big fan of his music, uh, dear listeners, and I have to say this: the last story's music is strange. <laughs> it's good, but there's just some parts of the game where you just like, huh? Interesting, especially the final boss theme, which is just it, it, it's it's insane. The dude is insane. <laughs> really is. It's totally. It's t- it's it's not his style. It's when you're using ah. scream screams to make a final boss battle. Yeah, um, interesting. But um, for the most part, like the theme of the last story and the um, opening screen. Oh, it's fantastic. It's just so spellbinding. Yet again, another game where you don't want to enter the game because you love listening to the music. Most of, but this is the thing. Most of the tracks of the game is very ambient in a good way. Like it's not like it blasts in your face. It just blends in, you know. Like the town's music is just I don't know. It's just appropriate would be the word. It's not like awe inspiring. It's just appropriate, really. But the battle theme is very addictive. I love the battle theme of the last story, and I like how it transitions into the um victory screen which is very bleak but it's awesome kind of bleak you know it's just like oh you're done prepare for the next hell <laughs> kind kind of way that's that's what i got from it and it's like okay it, it, it's such an interesting different kind of music from nabuo and for the most part i liked it there was a bit parts lacking but in the end there was some memorable tracks you know um taylor what did you think I, I really liked the soundtrack. I it, it is different. It is a little bit different. There are but there are some songs of his that are rather reminiscent of some of his older works. There's a particular boss fight that sounds very similar to a certain Final Fantasy VII boss fight that uh, <laughs> with uh, those who fight further it sounds very similar to yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the the remark about the final boss theme, I would say that it is kind of something in his style. At least it's I say it's very it's a it's kind of an I don't know, I wouldn't say an evolution, but it's along that same branch of how he approached it with Lost Odyssey. Yeah, it's kind of a transition. The Lost Odyssey mm. was the transition from Final Fantasy into his own style and then The Last Stories is kind of a spawn off that going mm. completely way off Kelter. But yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm not saying I hate it. I loved it. I liked it. it oh was, yeah, it's, 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 it's great. Bizarre. It's, it's fucking bizarre. <laughs> it really, it really is. The Probably my favorite is a different boss theme and it's it's almost like a... It almost makes you think of like a surf's up kind of thing when the, bo- <laughs> when the song first starts up. I know which one you're talking about, and I thought it was completely weird. It really it's was. weird, but it's so damn fitting. It is so fitting for the, the setting of it and where the battle takes place. It's just, oh, it works so well for it. I loved it. It was great. So, and I, yeah, so that I, I, I lo- the thing that I probably loved even more. You made mention of it on the menu screen. Is that the menu screen? It has the the petals kind of falling and stuff, and it's that white. But then when you hit the like A button, Stop. it brings yeah. up the the secondary, like the menu or something, and that that image changes as the story progresses. And yeah. I love, that. and that song there, holy crap, is so awesome. So like just. Oh god, I love. I really, 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 really enjoyed the music for it. So, if if they if he ever does a Mist Walker concert, that that has to be in there. It's just so good. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you- yeah, Arrow, what you think? Yeah, I, I, I don't really have to add anything. It's really different than what I'm used to from uh, Umatsu, but uh, overall, it it kind of fits and it it works. Uh, and yeah, sure, there were some tracks where I was like, yeah, uh, why? <laughs> It's not my my preferred style of, of uh, you know, but uh, overall it works. And uh, you know, I have to be honest. Uh, once again, comparing it to Xenoblade, it's not 
that awesome as Xenoblade, but it was a very fitting soundtrack, and I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, um, I, that's pretty much it. Uh, does anyone else have anything else to say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh yeah! yeah. Go for it! Blast, it. <laughs> blast away, arrow. We've been talking about last story for pretty much last forty-five minutes, and <laughs> we haven't talked about one thing in particular. And this is probably the thing that, if they were to exclude it, we would have had a lot better ex- experience. And that is the multiplayer. I don't know why, but Mistwalker apparently thought it would be a good idea to place a entirely multiplayer combat system for a system that isn't really well known for its online multiplayer and I have to be honest and I think I already know the answer but have you guys played the multiplayer because I have not do, have. do you know what's do you know what's funny? I was actually, I originally was um, really excited, but at the stage I said to myself, Greg, you're not an online gamer. I actually had people saying, would you want to play with us for me? And I'm like, yeah, no. It, it makes me seem to be like a heartless bastard, but it's like, I'm, I'm not big on online guys. I've only like played online like probably four times in my life and five times, and I, I never enjoyed it once. So... <laughs> But, you know, it's like, hey, I haven't played anyone in the YouTube community, so you guys can prove me wrong if we play together. Maybe at last I could break the curse. But to- Arrow totally forgot about it. Coming into Togo, talk about the last story. It's like yes. completely oblivious to it. <laughs> oh, yes. It's uh, it's it's an entire mode. And, uh, you know, being a programmer myself, I don't program games, but I know how hard it is, must have been for Mistwalker, and how many resources and time they put into this multiplayer component, you know, working out everything with lag and connectivity between users and all that time and effort I felt could have been spent on the game which would have easily put the game in at least uh, 1.5 as much content. I, at least I think so. Uh, and uh, hopefully, you know, would have worked out, you know, that, that kind of lacking character development and added more side quests and, and more... Uh, journey but you know uh, I haven't run into anybody who said you know I played the multiplayer I, I, I played the hell out of the last story's multiplayer because it's so awesome you know it's pretty much just the Colosseum side quest that you have you know just battling against each other I believe uh, I, I want to yeah, touch on that very quickly Yo, you, you go good sir Oh, I was going to say, yeah, there's the, the Colosseum aspect where you're fighting each other or you're fighting, uh, like, well, there, it, there's the different settings for it. Some where you have the Colosseum where you're fighting each other or you're fighting a boss with a group of other people. And you'll actually fight different bosses that appear in the game together with other people randomly online. Uh, or I think you can also find people to play with. I I usually just play it randomly because it was always fun. It, it, <laughs> it, 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 is is the monsters more substantial than in the storyline? Because the Colosseum in the storyline, it doesn't change up that much. Or is it just me? Because I know that there's like this whole so-called season one, but it's the same damn battle. And I'm like, when is this going to change? And then it changes, and then that second part sort of blends in with the storyline, which I actually thought was hilarious. But you know, but I don't want to touch upon that. But I don't know. Is it just me, or did, was it bland in the story? The Coliseum. Yeah. I I used it maybe two or three times, and I didn't really feel that I was unlocking anything new. So I just never went back to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it, it it took a lot. I I think I might have played that battle about ten or twenty times before something happened, and it only happens when the story progresses. And I'm like, can I be honest? That was kind of a waste. You had such a great idea and you didn't utilize it. You know, it's the that's, that's one of the, another little tidbit. You know, the game as a whole is, is great, but there's just tiny little tidbits that are just slightly annoying. You know. Yeah, that, I would have to say, yeah, final verdicts, gentlemen, on the last story. Taylor, you can go ahead with this one. <laughs> okay. Uh, honestly, I'm I'm going to be the probably the weird one out of the group on this one, but personally, I like this game a little bit more than Xenoblade. I think Xenoblade's a better game, but I got more of a... a 
uh, I don't know, like a personal kind of connection or enjoyment out of it. I don't know if it was because, I, like, I seen some of the the subtle kind of nods or at least some of the bits of story that Sakaguchi maybe had used in older Final Fantasy games kind of come out. In, there's one in, that's blatant. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's some that are blatant. There's some that are kind of a little bit quieter and stuff. And just I don't know. It just really it was a game that I really had missed from what Final Fantasy had become in the, it, with its iterations and stuff as of late. And it really kind of brought it back. Yeah, it doesn't have that expansive journey and whatnot. It's not. I would say the story is definitely not as enjoyable as Lost Odyssey. But I really enjoyed it. I personally really enjoyed it. Music was great. And I, I personally, I would definitely suggest this game. As, as Aaron, you got, and you had mentioned earlier, it's not as long. So if you're not looking for a 50, 60 hour game, you can plug and play and beat it within, you know, 25, 30 hours at the most. 30 if you're like crawling throughout the game or something. So, but yeah, I, I would highly recommend it. All right. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a hard game for me because uh, you know it it was a very enjoyable experience. It was a good game. It offered a new type of gameplay system that I really enjoyed. But uh, perhaps th this was due to the release date. But there were so many other games, and I felt at some point I was just rushing it and really didn't feel that enjoyment anymore later on. And I just went out to you know just finish it as soon as possible. And overall, the word that you know kind of compiles this game for me is kind of disappointment uh, compared to Xenoblade Chronicles I felt disp disappointed and compared to Blue Dragon and Lost Odyssey I also felt disappointed you know the earlier Mistwalker works but on its own it, it's it's still an enjoyable game I, I I know it's coming out in two months you know early July in North America and I definitely say to a lot of people pick this game up because it is quite a unique and good RPG for the Wii but keep in mind that the game has some issues and you might end up being disappointed. So don't overhype yourself for the last story, but it is still a solid game. As Eero just said, absolutely. Don't go into this expecting Lost Odyssey 2. It's a game of its own, and it has a lot of things it does right with a little annoyances there. For the most part, the good outweighs the bad, and it is worth buying it is it is a good game if you're still unsure i would wait but i, I cannot anticipate how many copies xt might publish and if it's going to be one of those rare games then you just have to jump on it like blackjack but um yeah i i personally enjoyed it you know all in all i i enjoyed my time with the the last story it's definitely not mistwalker's best game but it's a good game 